Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Illustrator scripting tutorial. In this one, a very highly requested tutorial, I'm going to be going over text and fonts in Illustrator. We're going to be creating some text with this script, we're going to be customizing the font, looking through different types of fonts that we can access, as well as adjust our text or character attribute. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel, and down in the description you can check out the code for this on GitHub. Be sure to follow us there for coding updates and in the description of this video as well you can follow us on instagram if you'd like to learn more outside of these videos you can join our discord server and check out these scripting extensions plugins expressions and many other channels and if you'd like to help support us on youtube and get cool perks you can become a member supporter premium supporter or vip on youtube all right so we're going to get started by creating a new script and we're going to start by defining our document which is going to be uh, our starting point. We're going to start with basically an empty document created in Illustrator. So we'll say uh, document is equal to app dot active document. And now let's go ahead and create a new layer in our layers panel here, uh, just to contain our text layer. To do this, I'm just going to say var text layer is equal to our document dot layers. We're going to look at all the layers in our document, and we're going to add one. Then we can go ahead and change the name of our layer and just say text layer dot name is equal to, for example, my text layer. So now if we go ahead and run our script, it's then going to create a text layer called my text layer. Now this isn't technically like a text layer yet, we've just created a base layer. Inside of each sort of layer, uh, you have many different properties inside of Illustrator. So if I find the layer object, we're going to see there are different types of things we can have within it, like graph items, group items, uh, legacy text items, mesh items, path items, placed items, plugin items, and the one we're looking for is text frames. This is where we can create and modify text. So what we're going to do is create a new text frame. I'll just create a variable called new text frame, and this is going to be equal to our text layer dot text frames, and this is going to return us with all of our text frame uh, items, but we don't have any yet, so we want to create one. So we'll say dot add, and then just so we can figure out the name and see it for ourselves, I'll say new text frame dot name is equal to my text frame. So now that we've created a new text frame, let's take a look at what we can do uh, with our object model viewer. The thing we need to look for is the contents, and this is the string of text that will be contained as an actual text sort of layer. So we're going to say new text frame dot contents is equal to whatever you want your text to be. So I can just say um, these are my contents. And now when we go ahead and run this, it should create a text layer with these. Uh, settings. It's going to be up here in the corner and really small. So we're going to be taking a look at how we can adjust the visual side of this, including the font uh, and the font size and other things like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is get all of our fonts, which I'm going to store in a variable called fonts. And the way we get these is with app.textfonts. So we'll give you a list of all of your text fonts. So what I'm going to do is comment out my code of making a new layer and just focus on looking at these fonts. So if I run this, it's going to give me a text fonts object. Looking at my text fonts object here, this is going to give us the entire length of our fonts. To loop through them, we can use the length it looks like of the fonts. So I'm going to create a loop and see what happens if we can loop through everything. So if bar i is equal to zero, and for i is less than our fonts dot length, increment i by one. And now if we look at the text font, which is what we're going to get for each iteration, it will give us a fonts I will be a, a text font object. We have things like the type name, style, parent name, and family. So let's go ahead and right line these. We're not going to want to alert because we've probably got quite a few fonts. So first let's, before we loop, we're going to say fonts.length. Let's see how many fonts we have. And then each time through, for each font, I'm going to show the family. I'll show fonts.name. We can maybe do dot .style. And now if I run this, you can see we have 957 fonts. And now let's see if it crashes or not. It may crash because of how many fonts it's going to have to display. 
but it should display them here in the console. So like I thought, it did crash indeed. So what I'm gonna do instead is just maybe right line the font names and I'll recomment out this code and run it in Illustrator. And that's going to appear to crash it as well. So we're just gonna have to pick a random index. Oh, actually, if you're a little bit patient, I guess it does display them. So as you can see, we're getting all of the names of the fonts. It's a huge list of them, so that's why it took so long. But you can use these now uh, to our advantage, and you have all this list of font objects which you can compare the uh, name of, the style of, or the family to get the font you need. And one other thing uh, that's super useful that I forgot to mention is that with our text frame, we can actually grab the number of characters and words that are within it. So if we basically uh, create our uh, contents here to say these are my contents, we can actually get all of the characters uh, as an object property, as well as all of the words as an object property as part of the text frame object. So if I run this, I'm going to get uh, uh, characters and words. So now that I can get the characters and words, I can probably check, say, the length of them. And as you can see, this says characters uh, 21 and words, it reads four. And as you can see, we do have four words, and it's also giving us all of our characters. So that's just a quick aside, but I wanted to let you know that there are other cool text frame properties you can have access to. Now that we've uh, figured out how we can loop through the fonts, let's go ahead and just pick uh, a desired font at a random index. So let's just say if, let's say if i is equal to 70, then we'll say desired font is equal to uh, fonts i. And if you remember, we have a lot of fonts, so we're gonna get to index 70 really quickly, but then it's gonna continue going to the very end. So once we find our desired font, I'll set i to be like 10,000. There's no way you have that many fonts, so it'll basically just leave the loop uh, after we find our desired font. Now, the next thing we need to go down into in order to get this desired font and apply it to our text is to get into the text range object. We're going to do this uh, by creating a variable called just like my text range. And this is going to be equal to our new text frame dot text range. And then if you remember me briefly mentioning at the beginning of this video, we're gonna be using the character attributes to actually adjust everything. The way you can remember that you need to go down to this level to adjust the font and the font size and stuff is because you can actually change all of these in the character panel inside of Illustrator. So just remember that we need to get the character attributes uh, level of our text in order to change those. So I'm gonna say var uh, char attributes is equal to my text range dot character attributes. And now if we go to this object here, character attributes, we have a lot of options, uh, sometimes too many, but we have options here for things like the font as well as the size of things. So in order to apply our font, we can go ahead and say text font. So I'll say char attributes dot text font. And we need to and we need to provide it with a text font object, which we have our desired font. And now let's change the size. What might be the property to change the size? Well, luckily there is a property called size. So I can take char attributes.size and the, the size is gonna be an integer, just a number, and that's gonna be the pixels uh, or actually points uh, of the font size. So let's set it to like 48. And now let's go ahead and start from scratch here. We'll remove our text layer and I'll run the script. And now, as you can see, uh, the positioning is wrong, but we're now creating a text layer with whatever the desired font we selected was. I actually didn't check what it was. So one more thing before we run the script, uh, I'm going to write line, and I want to know what our font that we got is. I'm gonna grab the name of it, and then we'll go ahead and make sure we have no text layer, run it. Now we'll create our text layer. It'll be in the wrong place, but it looks like it has a different font Checking out the properties, we have a 48 point font just as we said it, and the name of our font is Acumen Concept, which as you can see from our character panel is accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase that quite a bit, maybe like 128, 
And then maybe one last thing we can do is position this layer so that instead of starting up here when we apply it, it's in the center of our uh, document here. The way I'm gonna do that is by grabbing my text frame. So new text frame, and I'm going to say dot translate. Now this will allow me to translate it from one position to another. So whatever I give it is gonna be the offset from this upper corner that it's been created in into the middle. So a general estimate for the middle is gonna be the width of the document. So document.width times 0.5. And then we need a height value as well to offset it by, which we can say document.height times 0.5. But this isn't going to produce the exact result we want. Uh, firstly, this height needs to be minus. And now, as you can see, this is actually starting near the center. It needs to actually be centered in the center in our case. Um, so what we're going to do on the width is subtract our text frame dot width times 0.5. Now if I go ahead and create this, you can see on the uh, width axis, it's nicely centered. The height is a little bit off, it's hard to tell, but we need to do the same thing and offset it by half of our text height. So I'm going to say uh, minus, maybe it's plus, I think it's minus our new text frame dot height times 0.5. Go ahead and run this. And now it's very nicely centered uh, in a nice position and you can go in and tweak it as much as you feel fit. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. Follow us down there for code updates. And you can also follow us down there for Instagram updates as well. If you want to learn more, you can join the Discord server and check out the scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and many other useful channels there. And if you'd like to help support the channel and become a member on YouTube, you can become a member supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and get cool perks. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.